Good morning. It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas in here. I thank everyone who came out yesterday to help us decorate and put up the tree and clean up. And thank you very much for your help. And thanks to Aaron and Cliff for a good breakfast yesterday. I appreciate it. So welcome to Winterville Christian Church. My name is Rich Freeland. I am the pastor here. Um, it's good to see you this morning. We are affiliated with the Christian Church Disciples of Christ, a movement for wholeness in a fragmented world. We believe that if the gospel isn't good news for everybody, then it isn't good news for anybody. If you're visiting with us today, you'll find at the end of the aisle a visitor card. Um, if you feel so inclined, just let us know who you are. Um, we send out a couple of emails every once in a while, so uh, you won't get spammed, I promise. A couple of announcements. Um, the bulletin, we've been putting the bulletin online, and so if you are at home watching on Facebook, um, if you go to the Facebook page, you'll see that the online bulletin is there, and you can um, follow along um, with the bulletin online. Uh, also, I wanted to just remind everyone that um, Sermon Talk is on a break for Advent, and so we'll pick that up again in the new year. But during Advent, we are going to have a prayer service on Wednesday mornings at 10 a.m. Um, it will be streamed, and so um, if you uh, are available in the morning, you can come here or, uh, or watch at home. Um, that will be Wednesday mornings at 10. Let's see. This is last week's announcements. I've already got more. Sorry, I'm a little, a little confused here. Um, you will notice in your bulletin um, that we are um, going to be offering uh, poinsettias for Advent. And if you purchase a poinsettia, you have the option of um, putting a note on it that says it is in memory of someone or in honor of someone. And, uh, and those will be placed on the altar during Advent. And when Christmas is over, um, we will be taking those plants to the residents at Winterville Manor. And so um, if you would like to purchase um, a poinsettia for the altar. There is a form um, located, I think it's in um, the vestibule uh, on the east side of the church here. Um, there was also an online form that I had sent out in um, my email last week. Uh, December 13th is our blood drive. And so please, if you, um, if you give blood, you can go online and, and register for that, uh, that event. It's December 13th from three to seven. Um, you can also just show up here and stick out your arm and they'll take your blood. Um, so please, December 13th, 3 to 7. Yes? Uh, there is a tree in um, Ellis Hall, a small tree with some yellow stars on it. And um, if you take a star, you'll see a name and a gift on that star. And we are um, giving those gifts to, um, uh, what is the name of the, sorry. I'm sorry? Oh, River Oak Nursing Home in Grifton. And so uh, grab a star, buy a present, um, wrap the present, put the name on it, uh, the person's name on it, and bring it back. And... Um, we will get those to uh, River Oak Nursing Home in Grifton. And finally, uh, December 4th is the uh, lighting of the Christmas tree here in Winterville and the winter market. And we are gonna have a, a, a table there and just to greet folks and give out invitations to our Christmas Eve service. Uh, Christmas Eve service is at 10.30 here in the church. Um, if you come a little bit early, bring your favorite Christmas cookie and we'll have some hot cocoa and um, uh, just before service. And so Christmas Eve, 1030 um, will be our service, 1030 in the evening. Okay, did I miss any announcements? Okay, good. So at this time, we, uh, we are beginning Lent. Today is the first Sunday of oh, Lent, not Lent, Advent. We're beginning Advent. Um, gee, Christmas was nice this year, wasn't it? <laughs> Somebody's got to take this tree down. <laughs> it's like my house. 
Uh, so we are beginning Advent. Today is the first Sunday of Advent. And you will see in the back there is a devotional close to home. We again are doing a series that is put together by a sanctified art. And it is a collection of ministers and artists um, who prepare the, the services um, each week. And um, they don't write the sermons, but they give us some ideas. And so this, this year's theme is close to home. Um, and so um, you'll see a, a devotional in the back. There's also an Advent calendar for children. It was clearly put together by some adults because it has chores on it. Um, so not a fun Advent calendar, but uh, you are welcome to take one of those and, um, and bring that home to your children and grandchildren. <laughs> all right. Apparently I'm in a good mood this morning. Um, all right. And that is all the announcements I have. So at this time, we're going to light um, our uh, Advent wreath. And so, um, huh? Not yet? Go ahead, come on forward to light the wreath, please. We hope for a world where all is fair. We hope for a world with more bridges than walls. We hope for a world with wide open doors. We hope for a world with contagious laughter. We hope for a world where trees grow tall and streets run clean. We hope for a world where all people feel at home in their bodies, in the church, in their physical homes. We hope for that world. We long for that world. We are homesick for that world. So today, we light the candle of hope because hope keeps our hearts alive as we wait. May this light be a reminder that the wait is always worth it. We are close to home. May we carry hope with us. Amen. As we light our first candle of hope, we will sing together the candle of hope. Will you join me in the call to worship? Can one be homesick for something you've never known? We are homesick for a just world, for peace like rivers, for the end of suffering. Yes, we are our homesick. For joy that is contagious, for nations that feel like neighbors, and for hospitals that run empty. We are homesick for the world God promises. God is here. God is still creating. Let us worship holy God. Would you join us in the opening hymn, God's World is Changing? are raging 
You may be seated. And let us pray. God of the weary and waiting, Scripture tells us that where two or more are gathered, you are there. So we trust that you are here, listening to these words, drawing us close, stirring hope, awaken us. And for that, we are grateful. We are so grateful. Today, holy God, we feel close to home, close to you when the church sings, when the candles are lit. When we enter this space and someone knows our name, we feel close to home when our children are curious, when we find moments of true connection, and we are brave enough to be who you call us to be. However, God, even with gratitude for our close to home moments, we also recognize that very deep within us, we have homesick hearts. Holy God, we are homesick for a world we have not seen. We are homesick for a world where oceans are clean, trees are green, and animals are not endangered. We are homesick for a life where days feel expansive and Sabbath feels possible. We are homesick for days where mental health is not stigmatized, time is not a commodity, and self-worth is not a scarcity. God, who never leaves us alone, we are carrying both hope and homesickness all at the same time. Hold these two sides of the same coin tenderly and fan the flame of both. For we realize hope is a gift and homesickness is a reminder. For each conviction, we give you thanks. And now, with the confidence of children, we pray together, saying the Our Father. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. At this time, I would ask our ushers to take our collection. Please know that your, your generosity is appreciated here. Your generosity allows us to, to go out to the community, to do things uh, for those who are in need that are close to us. Family of faith, it does not take long to see that we are not home yet. There are people who are hungry, oceans that are polluted, churches that are fading, walls that are growing. We are clearly not home yet. So until we reach that promised day, until we make it home, giving what we can to make a better world matters. When we give our tithes and offerings, we help build God's home here. So with hopeful hearts, let us give.
holy God, we are homesick. We long for the day that you spoke of when swords will be beaten into plowshares. The lion will die, lie down with the lamb and justice will roll like waters. Until that holy day comes, take these gifts and use them to build that world here. We are hopeful. Amen. Um, at this time, we're going to share a little video with you. Um, if you, Our Christmas tree is a Christmon tree. And so um, please um, just take a moment to watch this video that tells you a little bit about our tree and about Christmons. The Christmons tree originated in 1957 at the Ascension Lutheran Church in Danville, Virginia. The Christmons tree tradition has continued at Ascension Lutheran Church for over 50 years. Mrs. Spencer, originator of the Christmons, stated the tree was never finished until someone came to see it and have the story of Christ explained to them through the ornaments. Today, the original ornaments are joined by gifts from around the globe in the Christmas season. Symbols such as stars, crosses, fish, crowns, and the Alpha and Omega remind us of Christ's identity, his story, and of the Holy Trinity. Chrismons were monograms of and symbols for our Lord Jesus Christ. Because these designs have been used by his followers since biblical times, they are the heritage of all Christians and serve to remind each of us, regardless of denomination, of the one we follow. All Chrismon's ornaments are made in a combination of white and gold to symbolize the purity and majesty of the Son of God, the Son of Man. The Cairo, pictured here, is a Greek symbol for Christ. It is one of the earliest forms of a Chrismon, or Christogram, formed by superimposing the first two capital letters, Chi and Rho, of the Greek word for Christ, or Christos, in such a way that the vertical stroke of the Rho intersects the center of the Chi. Here's a fun fact. The X in the word Xmas comes from the Greek letter chi. The suffix mass is from the Latin-derived Old English word for mass. There is a common misconception that the word Xmas stems from a secular attempt to remove the religious tradition from Christmas by taking the Christ out of Christmas, but its use dates back to the 16th century. Happy Xmas! time uh, invite you to um, offer peace to your neighbor in any way that you find comfortable. In Christ we are mothers and fathers and brothers and sisters to one another and as members of God's family let us share God's peace with one another. May the peace of Christ be with you all. So before we read our scripture this morning, let's just take a moment to settle into this space to clear our minds and open our hearts. And so if you are comfortable, close your eyes. If we breathe together as a community, taking in the spirit, releasing the stress and tension the world. God of the stars and God of our hearts, our days will pass, but your words will last. The earth might fade, but your words will last. Our memories might blur, but your words will last. The grass will wither, but your words will last. The sky could go dark, and your words would last. So as we listen today, help us to hold on to what will last. Help us to hold on to you. Gratefully we pray. Amen. The scripture lesson this morning is from Luke 21, 25 through 36. Listen for the word of God. There will be signs in the sun and the moon and the stars and on the earth distress among nations, induced by the roaring of the sea and the waves. People will faint from fear and foreboding of what is coming upon the world, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. 
Then there was seen the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to take place, stand up and raise your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. Then he told them a parable. Look at the fig tree and all the trees. As soon as they sprout leaves, you can see for yourself and know that summer is already near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that the kingdom of God is near. Truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. Be on guard so that your hearts are not weighted down with dissipation and drunkenness and the worries of this life. And that day does not catch you unexpectedly like a trap. For it will come upon all who live on the face of the whole earth. Be alert at all times, praying that you may have the strength to escape all these things that will take place and to stand before the Son of Man. If you join in the scriptural response, hymn 278, Wait for the Lord. So I mentioned that the series that we use is from Sanctified Art, and we've used them previously uh, for, we've used them for Lent and for Advent, and um, in previous uh, uses of, of their work, we've listened to songs from the many, and I went to the many website yesterday to just look for some music, and I found this description of Advent and I think it really speaks to, um, to this theme and to our, the message today. They write that the season of Advent holds a paradox for the church, for us. Advent is a stuck-in-the-middle waiting time. It's a time when we are meant to sit with the way things really are, in our world and in our lives, and hold them tenderly and gently with the hope for how things are meant to be. It's a time when we are called to remember that there is this beautiful world we all want to believe in and be living in, but there's a terrible not yetness about the world. And this is the season when we face that truth and recommit ourselves to what it takes to get to a Christmas kind of world. And in a world where greed and guns rule everywhere, we pray we can be a sign of hope and arms of love. I just thought that was a perfect place to begin our message today to recognize that we are waiting, waiting to get home, to get home to God, to get home to the kingdom. We're waiting for Jesus. And this waiting can feel like a homesickness. You see, we live in a world that's full of people who are homesick, homesick for freedom, homesick for peace, homesick for equality, homesick for family. Some are even homesick for an actual home. We are a people who often find ourselves in this space of waiting, in a liminal space, a space that is in between, a space that's right on the border of some kind of change or transition. We live in this knowing that the kingdom is, that the kingdom is and it is yet to come. Advent is this kind of space, a liminal space, a space of knowing that God is with us and yet we are waiting for God to come. So 
So for the next few weeks, we're stuck in this space, waiting for the coming of Christ. We're waiting for Christmas. But even more significant, I think, is the knowledge that we are standing on the edge of a significant transition, a transition from this world to God's world, a change from kingdom to kingdom, a, transi a transition from earth to heaven on earth. So we have every right to be homesick because we live in a world that's being overrun by a virus, a world where disease takes too many lives each day, a world where children go hungry and the elderly are often alone and forgotten. We live in a world that looks nothing like the world that Jesus promises. And so we wait. We're homesick for this place that Jesus is preparing. We wait and we long for a spiritual home. My wife Rebecca and I were talking recently and uh, we were discussing a feeling that we have sometimes. It's a feeling of homesickness. And it's an odd feeling because we are both home when we are feeling it. But when we stop to consider for a moment that feeling, it seems it's a desire to be somewhere else. It's a hope for a better place. It's not a morbid feeling or a dark feeling. Rather, it's this feeling of longing. It's almost like we don't belong here. We should be somewhere else. It's a feeling that we get when the pain of the world and the suffering of our human family is just overwhelming. And we realize that God has something better for us. It's a feeling that comes with a knowing that one day when Christ returns or when we are united with God, we'll be at home. We'll be at peace. And so when our world seems like a difficult place to live, we get homesick for the kingdom that awaits. See, today's reading offers us the hope of the kingdom to come. It offers the hope of the end of our homesickness. Jesus offers that there will be signs of the kingdom coming near, just like the sprouting of leaves on the fig tree signal the coming of summer. There will be signs to signal the coming of the kingdom. And this is where that liminal space comes in, where the waiting begins, because Jesus doesn't answer the question of when. He tells us it's coming and to look for the signs. Well, I don't particularly like to interpret signs and warnings from Scripture. It seems a bit of a fool's errand, and too many have tried and failed. So rather, I prefer to embrace the hope of what is to come, to embrace the promise of Christ, and then to do my part. You see, we can sit back and wait, or we can get busy waiting. And I prefer to get busy waiting. To get busy doing what I can to bring the kingdom near. To bring the kingdom a little closer. To get busy helping to ease my homesickness and the homesickness of others. I believe that we can alleviate some of that longing by attempting to create the world we want to see. The world that Christ promises. A world where the poor are no more, where the hungry are fed, the lonely are loved, and the oppressed are free. We have no choice but to wait for the kingdom, to wait for Christ, to wait for Christmas. But what we do with that time is important. We can lock ourselves up, pray and worship and wait for the end, or we can get busy waiting. Go out into the world and try and make it a little better. Sort of like the traveler who takes a few things from home when they go on a long journey. In every hotel room and every place they visit, they unpack their suitcase and they pull out a framed photo of family or a loved one and put it on the nightstand. Or like a child who brings their favorite teddy bear away with them so they can sleep at night. You see, we're travelers in this world. Visitors who belong to another realm. We belong to God and to God's world. And when we're homesick for our true home, we can get busy and make this place a little bit more like our true home. We can try to bring the kingdom here. We can seek justice for those who suffer under the boot of oppression. We can stand up for equality when our neighbors of color are being discriminated against. We can stand for equality when our queer and trans siblings are being threatened with the loss of their rights. We can spread love when all we see around us is hate 
We can return beauty and health to a creation that cries out from the scars of overuse. We can get busy for the kingdom by living into the kingdom that already is. You see, that's our paradox. That's the liminal space, the thing that creates our homesickness. We live in these two worlds, the physical world around us and the kingdom to come. Jesus tells us that the kingdom is near. It's in our midst. It lives in us. And yet he also tells us it's coming. We long for the kingdom. We desire a home with Jesus. We're homesick for the perfection that the kingdom brings. So if you're homesick, I understand. If you feel the waiting is too much, I understand. If liminal space is unsettling and the waiting is frustrating and discouraging, I get it. But what are you going to do about it? What are we going to do about it? Get busy waiting. Hang some pictures. Invite some people over. Make this world feel like your home. Bring the kingdom near. And may it be so. Please join in the communion hymn found in your bulletin. Um, it's a medley of Emmanuel and let's worship and adore him. In this meal, we remember the life and death and resurrection of the one who still takes on flesh among us today. And on the night that he would be arrested, Jesus gathered his friends and his companions. And in the midst of that very dangerous and chaotic time, they found each other at table, connecting over the stories of their ministry, over the stories of God and flesh among them. And as they did so, Jesus took the bread, he gave thanks to God, and he broke the bread, and he shared it with his disciples, saying, 
Take and eat. This is my body that has been broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he also took the cup and he gave thanks to God and shared it with his disciples saying, drink from this all of you. This is the cup of the new covenant, the cup of my love poured out for you. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And through this broken bread and this cup, we participate in the body of Christ. And let us pray. God of Advent, we come to this table in a world of countless changes and uncertainties. We never know from day to day what our lives and the world may unfold. We know Advent is a time of waiting, reflection, and anticipation, but it's so easy to be distracted and pulled astray. As we break this bread, the bread of life, and drink from this cup, the cup of salvation, may they give us hope, patience, and understanding to wait for the King, the King who brings us love and grace. Amen. If you're visiting with us today, know that this table is open to everyone. There are no boundaries, there are no barriers that can keep you from this table of grace. And so, come when you are ready. God has been ready. you would please stand for the benediction and the closing hymn. As you leave this service, your service begins. Comfort the homesick. Open your doors to others. Seek sanctuary. Be brave enough to go home by another way. And remember that here in God's house, all are welcomed. So come back soon. In the name of our foundation, the ground of being, 
God, Spirit, and Son. Go in peace. Our closing hymn today is The Climate is Changing. This was given to me by a signer. Um, let's see. Here we go.
be your arms of love let us be the ones that say there is another way let us be a sign of hope let us be your arms of love let us be the ones that say there is another way let us be a sign of hope Let us be the arms of love Let us be the ones that say There is another way We are waiting.